Hey everybody, this is your boy, Doug Kenny from Relentless and Unstoppable. Today we have Susie Freeman on with us. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. So glad to be here. Glad to have you. So how, how are you doing with your um, suicide prevention stuff? Pretty good. So next Saturday, I have a pretty big um, class to teach with the Gilbert Chamber, their leadership class. So right now we have about 50 signed up. We're hoping the goal was 100, but, you know, we'll see what happens. But I'm very excited for that. Great to hear. So uh, where are you at? I'm in Gilbert, Arizona. That's very nice. Is it good to live around there with that inner city that like looks like from the 1800s? <laughs> I would say yes, but it's it's changing. I moved into Gilbert about 12, 13 years ago. And oh man, the difference. It's changed a lot. I don't dislike it, but it's definitely not the small town feel that it used to be. Yeah, for sure. So tell everybody how we met. Well, I um, currently hold the title 2023 Miss Elite Arizona for the Women of Achievement pageant. And we were in California, Long Beach, this past January. And I met, Ken um, yeah, <laughs> I met you at the pageant. And um, I think when I gave my speech, was it the speech or was it when they introduced me? It resonated it was, with you what I did. It was the speech. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, we met there and connected and we just seem to have quite a bit in common as far as what we do or what, you know, you've experienced and what I do. So that kind of really brought us together and connected us a little bit there. And it was super, you know, great to meet you. And I was glad you came up and introduced yourself. And here we are. We've had lunch. Well, was it lunch? Kind of lunch. Yeah. Had really up. Lunch, early yeah. supper. Yeah. Thankfully, even though we met in California, shoot, we live what, 10 minutes away from each other. Here in I know it's just awesome, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect, perfect. And your mom, she's what she does is amazing, and totally just love that. I can't wait to learn more. Yeah, tell everybody what your occupation is. I do my initial and my most important is I teach suicide recognition and prevention, and um, I also go into the youth mentor space, teaching kids and young adults modalities and tools and stuff to help reduce trauma, deal with stress and anxiety, hoping to, you know, just keep them from ever feeling like suicide is an option. Definitely. It's a very serious cause. Uh, what led to you going down that path? You know, I started in 2017 on this actual journey when my youngest, sorry, my oldest son joined the military. And then my youngest son is now a police officer. So I thought, well, for sure, I have to know what to look for. So that's really what started the journey was learning on my own just to be aware of symptoms and signs in my kids. And, you know, once I got into it and learned how rampant it is, even at a nine, 10 year old level, I knew there just there was way more I had to do with this. So that's when I got further certified to be able to teach. And uh, that's what I'm doing now, teaching people and training people, you know, communities, uh, people in the workplace, women's groups, mom's groups, you name it. I will, I will teach anyone <laughs> that wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that you do that. So uh, what has the Thank response you. been for the most part to your work and effort? It's quite amazing. Initially, it seemed like when I would be networking or out places, people would ask what I do and I tell them and it was like, oh, that is so needed. And then they'd kind of walk away. Now, as I think me, maybe people get to know me more and maybe I've learned to navigate that introduction easier, I don't go so harsh, <laughs> that people are more intrigued and we'll have more conversation. I get more moms that come my way. And, you know, I had one even specifically today talking to me about her son when he initially went off to college and some things happened and how it affected a small group of kids within that college. And they now have left 
college and they're back at home and they're not pursuing what they had initially set out to do because it was just too traumatizing for them. So I like learning and I hate hearing about things like that, but I love having the ability to help and give any resources I can. So, you know, it's just huge. I mean, you know, just trying to get the resources out there. Heck, 988, not a lot of people know what that is. I say it and they're like, what's that? And, you know, it's kind of like asking, do you know what 911 is? Everybody knows what that is. So we need to get 988 to be just like 911. Everybody should know it. Definitely, you know, another thing we need to do is to be on the attack, but in a good way, meaning kill people with kindness. Yes, yes. Instead of violence or retaliation, that's, there's no room for that, nor suicide. This is true. Yeah, I just did a workshop. Well, you know, I do workshops with kids. So I just did a workshop this past Wednesday, and our focus was bullying and rivalry, you know, understanding the difference between the two. And there's good rivalry, there's bad rivalry, there's never good bullying. But it was interesting, because I did a little poll, it was a anonymous poll, you know, those kind of like Kahoot, or one of those, you can do a poll where you just put the barcode, a QR code in your phone, and you can answer questions anonymously. So I did one of those, which was great, but interesting. And sadly enough, Um, Over 50% of the kids in the classroom admitted that they were a bully. And, you know, about 60 plus 70, maybe 72% admitted they had been bullied. And some were just unsure. So I found that quite interesting. I loved that they were honest. But (laughs) I think... Yeah. I had experiences with bullying too throughout my life. Have you? I did. I did. And I... I told the girls, it was a bunch of girls in the class. They were a bunch of sixth graders. And I told them, yeah, mine was actually, it was sixth grade that I, the first one, the real one, I fully remember. Um, I lived in Alaska and there was a little stint of probably, I don't know, 50 yards between a set of woods between, you know, the sidewalk and entering the school parking lot that you had to walk through. And this girl, I was a new student, and some reason this girl did not like me. Her name's Renee, I remember. (laughs) And she waited for me behind a tree. And, uh, you know, of course, she would pick on me all the time, and I couldn't figure it out. But then one day, she just waited for me behind a tree, and she jumped out, pulled my hair, drug me to the dirt. You know, I don't want to say beat me up, but, man, I was terrified. (laughs) I was just, Mom, I am not going to school. (laughs) Yeah, I know what you mean. That's very tough. Do you want to hear my experience with bullying or one of them? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Years ago, I went to a basketball tournament with a friend of mine after about a year after a couple years after I graduated from high school. And my friend was a former teacher or paraprofessional at the school that I went to. And we we reconnected after graduation and I went with him to the basketball tournament. And during the tournament, however... There was this coach who had some children that were really obnoxious and really disrespectful, and they they were harassing me throughout the whole day and trying to, when I was working the register and tr- and they tried to steal money from the register and other things and oh, wow. and I and eventually when I went to go take a break, they came up to me and threw water in my face. And, and, and Kool-Aid as well. And it soaked one of my favorite shirts that I was wearing. So I was really ticked off. And I, the next thing I remember, I was grabbing one of them by the shirt and holding them up to the wall, you know? And yeah, and I looked over my shoulder and I saw three security guards running towards us. And I just remember thinking, you know what? These are attorney's fees and these are court costs that I can't afford. So I put the person down and walked off and it was ruled a self-defense move and the bullying ended after that. But that's just an example of what I've experienced. Yeah. Oh, that, you know, that's terrible to hear. But that leads me into kind of that um, bit where part of teaching kids is learning how to stand up for themselves, right? It doesn't yeah. have to be a physical stance, but just teaching kids maybe certain things to say that can just like put the bully in their place. Um, 
I told the girls one of the things uh, we we did like some scenarios with mm-hmm. the girls, and one of the scenarios was kind of you know just someone you know picking picking name calling just all of that kind of stuff being mean. And I had told the girls one of the responses they could say is, "Oh, you know, hey, I'm so sorry you're having a really bad tough time at home, but I'm here for you if you want to talk." Because then, what is the bully gonna do? <laughs> Well, he could just go up to you and slap you like Will Smith did. Oh, my God. No, we hope not. We hope not for sure, you know. We hope not. (laughs)